Hey, welcome back everybody. Nice to have you back again. This time I wanted to show you something um, kind of unusual. You don't see these all the time. This is an actual United States Postal Service leather mail satchel. Um, they made these from the early 1900s up until the early 1970s. This was standard issue for a letter carrier, what we used to call the mailman. He would uh, shove pretty much his whole day's worth of um, mail in here and then just start walking up and down the streets and delivering the mail to everybody's mailbox. Um, they were made up into, uh, until about um, 1970 is kind of when they stopped making these and they switched over to the nylon mailbag, the very familiar navy blue nylon mailbag that um, is used today. Um, the letter carriers were absolutely overjoyed when this happened because the nylon mailbag weighed virtually nothing, maybe, a, you know, six or eight ounces, something like that, whereas these things were um, pretty heavy. And if you shoved your whole route worth of U.S. mail in there, it could probably weigh, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 pounds maybe. It's a huge capacity bag. It's, it's absolutely enormous. From one side to the other is 23 inches, and it's 17 inches tall. So um, it's big. Uh, as far as how wide it is, that just depends on how much you cram into it. So um, you could literally just put a ton of mail in there. So, and I'll show you that. Um, but this is a, um, an example of an actual USPS leather mail satchel, um, commonly referred to by almost everyone as a mail bag. Um, but um, the USPS, they, they call them leather mail satchels. So um, I happened to pick this one up on eBay. I had been looking for a while. And then I just kind of thought, eh, you know, they, they range in price from $100 to $1,000. And they are all in various stages of decay and rot. Some are literally falling apart at the seams and just cracking. And I mean, I don't know why they would bother to put it on eBay. It's really something that should be buried or thrown in the trash because it's basically compost. And then you have some that are in better condition, and then you have some that are just literally in pristine condition, like this particular example, which is um, what we would consider new old stock. It has never been carried. It has never been used. It just sat on a shelf in some post office in Jackrabbit Flats, Missouri, for who knows how many decades until somebody found it and said, hey, let's put this up for sale on eBay. So if you're looking for one of these, Condition is everything with one of these mailbags. You want something in really nice condition so that you get to carry it for a long time. You don't want to buy one of these that has a beautiful, just gorgeous patina. It just is so luscious looking, but you only get to carry it for a year because it's literally falling apart. And now what are you going to do? You know, you just spend a lot of money. You only get to carry it for a few short months and it literally falls apart on you. So you want one that is in nice condition, a little patina, but lightly used um, so that you get the joy of carrying it um, yourself. Okay. Um, the reason they're not always in very nice condition is because the letter carriers, you know, I sincerely doubt that they would carry this for a few months, you know, through the winter time and you know, set it down and look at it and go, boy, you know what? My leather sure is looking kind of sad. I'm going to get out some mink oil or some neat's foot oil, and I'm going to condition it, and it's my baby. I'm just going to condition it. I doubt that ever happened. There might have been one or two letter carriers who were that conscientious, but this was just a tool. This was a tool that reminded them of their job, and, uh, you know, I don't know about you, but if a tool on my job I'm not going to caress and massage is just a tool, I'm going to use it. And, you know, that's as much romance there is in that, you know, situation. Um, but occasionally you find them like this. So um, it's got an original strap on it. This strap I didn't get with the bag. I found this um, 
at another time, but it was a strap that was never used. The straps, um, they're vegetable tan leather. The whole bag is vegetable tan leather, but the strap is really heavy duty. I mean, you could just load this thing down with a lot. Um, it uses Conway buckles that are either brass and nickel plated or stainless steel. I think the U.S. Postal Service specifications called for either or because I've seen either or on um, U.S. mail satchels before. The shoulder pad is padded, very nicely padded. It's thicker on one side than it is on the other, so it's designed for the thick part to go on the outside of your shoulder, so it's not going to want to slide off your shoulder. And that's why a mail bag is constructed the way it is with the um, the anchors for the strap on the back part of the bag. So it's on the back part of the bag because as you're carrying it, the um, center of gravity goes up the back side of the bag, holding the bag closer into your body and not wanting the bag to have a tendency to, to slip you know, away from you or off your shoulder. That could become really annoying if you were carrying the mail every day, day in and day out. So. It's made the traditional way, because it's a traditional bag, meaning there's a leather spine right here that is that wide. There are the stitches holding it in. And underneath this leather here is a sandwich of leather, pretty thick vegetable tan leather. Um, it's there because it needs to give this part of the bag uh, some strength to carry the weight, to carry the load of all of the, the mail in there. So this is reinforced, a reinforced part of the bag. These are copper rivets. Those are the strongest means of securing leather together that we know of. And um, so that carries all of the weight of the bag right on that spine right there. So um, it's built, of course, in the traditional way. So it's stitched here. It's piece of leather here, a piece of leather here, this piece, and this piece comprise the bag. So it's made of uh, literally um, four pieces of leather and then copper rivets are used to hold as well as that double line of stitching there. Okay, Bottom of it, um, again this is going to bellows out the more stuff you put into it. Okay, It's got a huge, huge storm flap on it. I mean this thing is humongous. It is embossed with the U.S. mail. That was part of the specifications, the requirements for the different companies that made these. There were six or eight or maybe even more companies that were contracted to build these for the United States Postal Service according to the USPS specifications. So this one was made by the Watts Manufacturing Company. This one was made in 1970. It is um, brand new. It's never been carried. Um, but there are other companies, Bona Allen, Berkheimer, um, quite a few that um, you, can still, you can still find them. They're still available. So under this big, huge flap, which has no closure, it's just they didn't have closures. Unless you were carrying the mail in a very windy part of the country or you were um, aboard ship or you were um, wherever you know, the, the weather was really bad and you needed to secure this, but in most parts of the country there was no closure. It was just this big flap so you could get into it quickly. So it does have this, these folds in it and those are designed so that the more you fill this up this kind of bellows out and allows you to keep filling it more and more with more stuff. Okay. Again, vegetable tanned leather. Vegetable tanned leather is uh, stiff when it's when it's brand new, kind of like this one. If I were to carry this every day, day in and day out, throwing it around, this leather would become very, very soft to the point where it became kind of floppy. But it's, this leather is not like that yet. It's made, all USPS mailbags, the specification called for this um, piping in between the seams, and that's not decorative. That piping in between the seams, it's a piece of leather, a strip of leather that's folded over and then sandwiched in between. And that's there to relieve the stress on these seams. So you can imagine you have 40 or 50 pounds of mail in there. It's a hot summer day. You don't want these seams coming apart. So that piece of piping 
just relieves some of that stress in there, allows the bag to be used a lot longer, has a lot more durability. Inside, it's absolutely cavernous. It's humongous in there. You could carry any laptop that was ever made. You could probably put your tower from your desktop in there if you wanted to. It's that big. This compartment was used for the mail to be delivered that day. So he would bundle up all of his mail and he'd start walking up Elm Street and pull out the bundle for Elm Street and deliver that to every home. Turn the corner onto Main Street, pull that bundle out, start delivering that, so on and so forth. You can see he could put, if not his whole route, a, a great deal of it in there. And then there's a leather divider here. And in here would have been the mail that you handed him. So you're sending a letter to Aunt Betsy or Uncle Joe. He'd grab it from you, throw it in here, take that back to the post office. So you can see this is the leather spine right here. It is very stout. It is very thick. Um, so it gives a lot of support to that part of the bag. And there you can see Watts Manufacturing. And these bags weren't made for the retail market, so the stitch ends are just left ragged like that. They are, the, the joints are secured with a copper rivet, so there's a copper rivet going through here and through here. So all the stress points are secured with a copper rivet. And then they have these straps here, these upper side straps that give more support the, the, the heavier the bag gets. You don't want the, the bag to pull apart where all the stress would be up here. So um, it's not, again, it's not designed for the retail market, so it's not pretty. It's not, um, they didn't have to gussy it up to go on a shelf in Macy's, so you can come and look at it. It was designed as a tool for the letter carriers. So um, designed to last for decades, and it probably will quite easily. It is not light. It weighs at least six pounds, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, so it's a heavy bag. It's a big, huge bag. Uh, I don't think you would want to really carry this to work unless you were a salesman and had a whole bunch of samples you needed to carry into your client. They would definitely remember you if you walked in with one of these. But I could see these being used by people as uh, an overnighter, a weekender. You could easily, easily shove three or four days, if not more, worth of clothes in there and travel in style. It will fit in the overhead bin on an airliner. Um, you would probably be the only person doing that, so you'd, you'd probably look pretty cool doing it. But I just wanted to show it to you. It's unusual. They are available. You can find them on eBay. You can find them on Etsy. Just look for one in really nice condition so that you get to use it uh, for a time, and you're not just the one who's going to bury it because it's you know past its prime and not going to work anymore. So um, wanted to show it to you. Um, if you're into this kind of thing, if you want to leave me a question, um, just leave a question below in the comments. I wish I had a link to where you could get these. You, you just have to search for them um, like I did on eBay or, or Etsy or yard sales or antique shops, things like that. But um, thanks for watching and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.